Hello and welcome to this session. My name is Anne Gilleran and I come from Dublin in Ireland. I currently work at the European Schoolnet as a pedagogical manager. However, I've worked all my life in education as a teacher, a guidance counsellor, school principal and even a teacher trainer. The project I've chosen today as examples highlight how key competences may be developed through project-based learning or PBL for short. These examples come from the project eTwinning, funded by the European Commission, which is the largest community for teachers in Europe, allowing schools to carry out projects together nationally and internationally. In an eTwinning project, a project is usually founded between two teachers from different European countries. Once it is registered, the two founding teachers are then free to invite other teachers to join the project and all the work is carried out in an online workspace called the Twin Space. The underlying basis of project work is that there will be a great deal of emphasis put on exchange and collaboration, not only between the teachers but also between their students. The focus is on inquiry-based learning and problem solving, often using authentic real-life problems as a starting point. You can learn more about what eTwinning has to offer teachers by visiting the website www.etwinning.net. Of course, this project work is also ideal for teachers to work on the development of key competences in a practical and motivating way. The examples I talk about demonstrate very clearly how different key competences can be approached in different ways and with different age levels. Each example has a video link and a link to the work done, which you can follow up on in your own time. My first example involves students from the lower secondary school level, aged 12 to 15 year olds, in a project which is called the Rainbow Village. For me, this is a perfect example of how to develop social and civic competence in young people. In this project, the students had to imagine they were living in a post-Armageddon world where they had to rebuild life in their newly created rainbow village. The twin space for this project highlights the myriad of tasks that the students carried out, from deciding the best situation for their village physically, drawing up the rules of their society and holding real-time elections. They thought deeply on social and justice issues and reflected both on the rights and responsibilities of what it is to be a citizen and a ruler. The second project is a rather different one, and this is called Let Your Passion Shine, and it involves quite young students aged 9 to 11. As the title suggests, the work of the project permitted them to explore various subjects and to develop their talents and skills around those subjects while feeling at the same time deeply involved in the project. There was a wide variety of topics and tasks presented in a fun, creative and innovative way. This project, for me, highlights one of the most difficult key competencies, developing the learning how to learn. The students were, were exposed to various subjects, and the working space of the project, in, which you will find in the course library, has a range of topics from art, music, science and maths. The students had to explore each subject and work in international teams setting challenges for the group. Throughout the process, the students learn to develop their own ideas and work to their own strengths. The project also gave them the opportunity to, for development of other competences, for example, such as dig digital competence and communication both in the mother tongue and in foreign languages. So a very varied project. My final two examples involve older students from the upper secondary level, aged 16 to 19 year old. The first of these projects is called Peck the Traveller Flea, with students from the vocational school sector in France, Spain, Italy, Portugal, the Czech Republic and Turkey working together. The project worked on developing competencies in foreign languages and cultural awareness and expression through building the story of Peck and his travels in the form of a digital comic strip. Of course, digital competence also found a central role, as you can see by looking at both the twin space and the video, which are available in the course library. My final example is called a project called Health for Life and features students aged between 15 and 19 from the Netherlands, Belgium, Italy. 
And I think this is a good example of both how both maths and science competence can be tackled in an authentic rather than theoretical way for students. However, the project also fostered for me the sense of initiative and entrepreneurship competence in, in the way in which it challenges the students to think for themselves and to make their own judgments. The students carried out surveys on smoking, drug taking, sexual practices, etc. among their peers and then they ran lab experiments on the effect of various substances on the body. This is a really well documented project and their twin space is really excellent. In it you get a real sense of commitment the students had by watching the video which is available in the resource library. I hope you take a time to look at the examples I've described and more importantly, think seriously about adopting some of these pro approaches yourself when you come to plan your own projects to foster key competences in both yourself and your students. My name is Livia Di Nardo, and I work at Junior Achievement Young Enterprise, also known as JY Europe, the largest provider of entrepreneurship education programs reaching 3.2 million students at primary, secondary, vocational and university level. Investing in entrepreneurship education is one of the highest returns on investment Europe can make. According to the European Commission Entrepreneurship 2020 Action Plan, all member states should offer the opportunity to young people to have at least one practical entrepreneurial experience before leaving compulsory education, such as running a mini company, being responsible for an entrepreneurial project or a social project. Reaching for education strategies that can aid long-term growth and employability, the European Commission has identified mini-companies as a successful program for fostering entrepreneurial education. The idea behind is to involve students and teachers in setting up and running a real mini-company while being at school through an education program based on a clear set of steps and learning outcomes and mainly focused on learning by doing methodologies and practical application of students' basic skills. Take a look at this short video explaining the Mini Companies program. It's a school year like no other. Students begin with an intense idea generation phase and then agree on how to make their idea happen. This year is possibly going to be the first practical entrepreneurial experience they have ever had. Each group of students forms a company and moves quickly into the real world of building a business. They need to find startup capital, develop a business plan and market their idea. Students are working with their teacher who are guiding them step by step through the process. Each company has a volunteer mentor from the business community who can advise them along the way. Because there are so many companies in different countries, there are lots of opportunities for students to extend their enterprises across borders, set up partnerships or participate in international fairs and competitions. Important competencies are being developed here. Creativity, self-confidence, teamwork, resourcefulness, perseverance, taking responsibility, initiative. At three points during the year, students reflect on how they see their progress in these areas. As the year comes to a close, students wind up their company and take a final exam to certify their business, financial and economic knowledge. Endorsed by leading companies, education institutions and international organisations, the Entrepreneurial Skills Pass shows the student has had real-world business experience, developed entrepreneurial competences and learned key economic concepts. It is a valuable addition to their skills portfolio, online profile or CV. JY Europe entrepreneurial activities cover all levels of education, ensuring progression in entrepreneurship education from primary school to higher education. Two factors are key for the success of entrepreneurial education program. First, the engagement of volunteers mentors from enterprises to help students make the connection between what they are learning and the world outside in school. Second, Teachers have to become learning facilitators and work in teams with the business sector mentors. Entrepreneurial teachers require active learned center pedagogies and learning activities that use practical learning opportunities from the real world. This approach involves significant changes in the way teachers themselves are educated. 
Research carried out by the European Commission shows that the core skills and values linked to entrepreneurship education are seldom a priority in teacher education programs. In the 21st century school, it is important for teachers to apply entrepreneurial learning method and tools in any subject and for any age group. JYE is working a lot to support teachers to develop students' entrepreneurial skills. One of its main initiatives for teachers is the Entrepreneurial School, which aims to train teachers to teach in an entrepreneurial way, regardless of the subject they teach. To help them with this, the project has developed a virtual guide for entrepreneurial learning. The guide is a practical and useful tool for teachers in primary, secondary and vocational schools that want to mainstream entrepreneurial learning in teaching methods and learning processes they set up in the classroom every day. The first section of the guide contains more than 100 tools and methods to support teachers implement entrepreneurial teaching and learning, including good practices and framework documents from 85 different schools in 10 countries. The tool is user-friendly and allows you to search for resources according to age level, subject area or country. There is also a section where you can find best practices, school and case studies with examples of visions, plans and activities to be used in your own school. In the guide, you can also find the most important strategy and policy documents on entrepreneurial learning at European or national level. On top of this, the guide also provides you with relevant tools to assess your entrepreneurial teaching and check the quality of entrepreneurial activities of your school. The engine behind the Entrepreneurial School Guide is the community of educators across Europe working on entrepreneurial learning. Within the virtual guide, the tools and methods are presented and recommended by teachers for teachers. If you are a teacher and would like to start an entrepreneurial project in your own school, you can join our community and get your students equipped with the right skills they will need to succeed in the world of work. Remember that you can access further reading and related resources to this session from our course library. We also encourage you to visit the course forum where you can take part in an ongoing discussion linked to this topic with fellow participants and instructors.